what are you hearing then about the scale of the Israeli response, what that could look like? Uh, they promised that it would be, um, you know, like something we've never seen before in Gaza. There have been uh, invasions of Gaza before, of course, um, since uh, Israel formally abandoned uh, control of the Strip in uh, 2005. Uh, they were pretty horrific, um, you know, killing hundreds and in one case, uh, two cases, thousands of people. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, this is going to be a very bloody and gruesome exercise. Um, we don't know how they're planning to uh, carry out this stretch to, you know, wipe out every Hamas fighter. Um, if that's really what they mean, there are, you know, probably 30 or 40,000 of them. Um, but uh, they they say they want to end the, the threat of Hamas for good. So uh, from the people inside Gaza hearing that, what does that mean for them? They don't know where to go. They're very, um, uh, you know, they're they're used to this sort of thing in some senses. But um, of course, you can never really get used to the idea of your uh, home being bombed, um, uh, possibly with everyone in it. That is that the Israel, I believe, have said that they give warnings of where they're going to strike places are you seeing that happen in practice uh yes so um they do and indeed in some cases they give warnings to whole neighborhoods to to get out of course there's two things there one is that um it's it's uh, easier said than done in a place like gaza because uh it's a very crowded enclave and if large parts of it are being bombed then where do you go you can't get out of gaza it's uh closed off the 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 border is now closed to israel and uh the border crossing with egypt is is rarely open and is not open at the moment um so uh there's that and the second thing is that um you know not all bombing is accurate anyway so i i spoke to one guy who decided to leave when the the block 100 yards up the road was warned to leave and he decided to leave with his family as well and he was glad he did because the, his block was uh, was leveled and uh, and 10 people were killed so um you know not you know not not every uh, um not every not every bombing is preceded by warning because in the you know even if even if they are attempting to warn in every case um that doesn't always work yeah um you know, the UN are saying there should be a humanitarian corridor out of Gaza. How how likely actually is that? And if it was, how complex a process of sort of negotiation from that perspective, but then also just practically, uh, would that be in putting that in place? Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that seems reasonable and obvious at first, at first, um, at first light. But the um, there are there's one big problem there, which is that the only way out of Gaza that's not into Israel, and Israel won't allow um, uh, 2 million Palestinians with Hamas supporters and members among them to enter Israel, um, there are, the only way out is to Egypt. And Egypt has always made clear it will not accept millions of uh, Palestinian refugees. So um, that border uh, fence is closed. Uh, the Egyptians have told the Americans, we understand that that border will remain closed, that it's not prepared to have a humanitarian corridor. Uh, there is also a broader issue of um, the assumption it would have to be that with the destruction of Gaza that is planned, if two million Palestinians left, then they wouldn't go back. There'd be nothing to go back to. And uh, then you'd effectively had a, a mass ethnic cleansing of this uh, enclave, um, which, uh, you know, uh, is it, it, it just is unimaginable, really, that that um, that could be allowed to happen, that you could just get rid of um, a population like this um, through these means. It's all obviously playing out on the world stage. And talking about Israel's action, you know, um, the American Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, is currently travelling to Israel. He said the US would give Israel everything it needed. What do you infer from that? Uh, it means they'll carry on selling them weapons, um, you know, uh, which it does. Uh, so it will be, um, uh, you know, it will be encouraging its uh, arms industry to carry on providing weapons. It will provide financial support, uh, provide uh, intelligence and technical support where needed. Though, of course, Israel has um, is uh, has a lot of that on its own. Uh, it's also sent an aircraft carrier into the eastern Mediterranean uh, uh, with its support vessels. 
as a uh, as a warning to other uh, neighboring countries or uh, groups like Hezbollah not to get involved. Um, uh, that's certainly been held as a reassurance here, though. Uh, obviously, threatens to you know possibly take the war onto a new footing mm, yeah and and with this uh, potential ground invasion clearly things uh, look like they're going to escalate uh, rather than the the opposite on on a very basic level for people in gaza anticipating more to come what about the the absolute basics in terms of energy water um fuel we're hearing a pretty desperate situation yeah, so uh, the um, the Israelis have um, cut off supplies to Gaza. Uh, they obviously the borders closed, so food and uh, uh, is not getting through. They've cut off the uh, supply of water and electricity. Um, uh, Gaza is not self sufficient in in either. Um, that's obviously going to put a huge strain on the territory. The uh, Gaza has a power plant, but it uh, it ran out of fuel yesterday, um, so it stopped working. Um, Israel says that. Uh, Hamas or Gaza have been given funds to improve their infrastructure and uh, improve their power supply, but have uh, failed to use that money. Um, However, for ordinary citizens, of course, that's a disaster. Um, The lights went black yesterday. Um, The the whole enclave is relying on generators for electricity um, as far as it can, including, of course, the hospitals uh, who are afraid that they will run out of fuel in the next few days. Um, I think uh, there will be um, pressure on Egypt uh, and um, uh, uh, Israel to the extent that it would be involved in that decision uh, to allow in humanitarian aid, including fuel for generators uh, and possibly for the power plant into the um, in through that southern crossing with Egypt. But uh, that's I think you'll see that negotiated in the next couple of days. Mm. Uh, talking about negotiations what is happening with um hostages we think it's about 150 people have been taken captive and hamas said they've hidden them in sort of safe places in tunnels within gaza and threatened to kill them if civilian homes are bombed by israel without without warning kind of what processes are underway to try and um to try and rescue those hostages how, how practically possible is it to do any of that um so there, there are negotiations underway. I spoke to um, diplomats um, in the uh, in the Middle East yesterday who told me that uh, Qatar is uh, is um, leading attempts to negotiate between Hamas and Israel. Uh, it's not particularly optimistic. Uh, however, um, it, uh, both sides are fairly intransigent. Uh, what they're focusing on the first instance is women and children. I mean, there is. I don't know. It's, it's it's hard to say. It's no one saying this. It's more of a sense you get that uh, the Hamas political leadership were taken aback by the success of this raid, and they didn't really expect to have you know 150 hostages, including elderly women, uh, children, women. They have hostages aged between 85 and three, 85 and three months. I mean, it's in, incredible. Um, and uh, yes, they'll be hidden in tunnels across the, or you know, uh, in safe houses across the uh, territory. It'd be very difficult for Israel to find out where they are. Um, so, so there is, so there is this uh, talk that the women and children at least could be released in return for an exchange of uh, Palestinian women prisoners in Israeli jails. So that that could be a sort of preliminary deal. Uh, but even that is not proceeding fast by any means. And of course, if Israel um, do launch that ground invasion in the next few days, which is highly possible, maybe next week, um, you know, that's going to make those sort of negotiations very difficult. And final thing, the, the sort of scale of that ground invasion, what are you hearing? So, um, as I say, they've they've called up 300,000 reservists. Um, that's a considerable proportion of the Israeli population, of course. Um, they've said it'll be, uh, you know, bigger than anything we've seen to date in Gaza. So that's um, pretty astonishing. They, uh, um, they of course, are completely asymmetrical war. And of course, in that uh, Israel has fighter jets, it has a huge array of tanks, including a new model tank that was released, that was uh, unveiled only last month with um uh, with the sort of technology in which Israel is actually a world leader, which is um, fast response um, vision technology, so that uh, these tanks have 360 degree, degree 
um, uh, vision of all the threats around them, which is very important if you're going into a built-up area. On the other hand, Hamas have, um, you know, they have the territory and they have uh, control of the buildings and uh, uh, can can inflict a lot of damage. Um, so uh, it's going to be a very uh, bloody affair.